Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, BJ Dell, and today is a new drawing tutorial on my series of videos where I show you how to draw every single letter of the alphabet as an animal that begins with that letter, all using the iPad in Procreate and all in real time, no time lapse or edits. Today, we're up to the letter J. I'm gonna show you how to draw this cute gerboa from start to finish. Shout out to F Nunez 89 for the suggestion of the gerboa, which brings me to the point. We've got K through Z left. If you've got an idea for an animal going forward that you wanna see, leave a comment down below. You might see your suggestion come to life in an upcoming video, but today it's all about the gerboa. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so starting out, I'm using a 4,000 by 4,000 pixel 300 DPI canvas. It's an RGB canvas. For my brushes today, I'm gonna to be using my Essential Creator Set for Procreate. Link for this is down in the description. I'm gonna start out using the Brainstorm Sketch Brush, and then we'll hop on over to a couple of these other ones later on. And for my color palette, once again, I've got this pre-made, so if you wanna download the exact same colors that I'm using in today's video, you can get that for free on my website. If you go to bjdell.com, underneath the YouTube reference materials page, you'll find a link to that. It's also down below too in the description. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So usually, I'll just start sketching. However, I've never drawn a gerboa before, so this is one of those cases. I'm gonna need a reference photo, which got downloaded already. So to get this in here, we're gonna go up to our wrench icon. We're gonna go over to canvas and then we're gonna turn on a reference. I've got it saved in my camera roll. So I'm gonna hit image here. I'm gonna hit import image and then we'll select this from the camera roll. And there's our cute little gerboa. So let me get him up here out of the way. And also with this whole series, I've gone in starting out, I'll always add in the actual letter behind using the type tool. Uh, with this, I kind of have an idea here with the tail, that's gonna form the bottom part of the J. And then I wanna kind of throw these ears to the side on each of them. So we're gonna have an ear here, an ear here. So I kind of already know what it's gonna be. And I think throwing that actual letter J in the background is gonna do more harm than good, kind of distract us. So we're gonna forego that this time. It's the first one in the series doing that. So we've got that decided. Let's go ahead and jump into it. We're gonna start off with the head and just like always, starting off using some basic shapes to get us going. So this is gonna be the start of the head here, kind of this area. We've got the nose here in the front. I'm gonna draw a, another oval there, kind of help us visualize that. And then I'm gonna start to kind of connect some of these shapes. And since this is a cartoon, we're gonna go ahead and kind of stretch some of the proportions here of our gerboa. The nose, I'm gonna throw this in. I'm gonna make it just a kind of plain cartoony nose, just nice and round instead of going in and doing all the crazy details with the nostrils and stuff, it's gonna look a little too realistic. So I'm gonna kind of steer away from that. Let's pull the bottom of the, the snout here kind of back. And to a mouth here, we'll do a mouth crease back in here. And then maybe pull a bottom lip down here underneath. Start to kind of bring this shape around a little bit further, kind of refining the shape here. Get that round section here in the back. All right. Get a really big eye in here, a nice big oval for the eye. Put a crease under there for that. We'll just fill this in solid black, so we'll get some shading in there just so we can kind of visualize it. Even hold down here in the background to select white and throw in a couple of kind of highlights there. You'll see, I'm kind of elongating this. I might even grab the arrow here and with warp, I might pull this back just a tad bit. So want maybe a little too long on the snout. I can kind of play with the warp tool to get a little bit closer to the reference picture. It's one of the great things about digital art is being able to do cool little things like that. All right, I think that looks good. Now for the ear, I'll go ahead and throw in some ovals. I'm gonna move this down so we can get behind this. 
So we'll throw in some ovals here. Gonna show us where the ears are gonna go. And then I can start to kind of pull these around. I got that little notch in there, so get that. Back in towards the head. And then on the top here, we've got that little fold or that crease there. Get that knocked in there. Probably pull in some kind of tufts of hair here too. It's gonna break all that up. Gonna fine tune that head again, and then we'll go over to this side. Get that notch in there again. Bring that in towards the head. Okay, so there's our head. We're off to a pretty good start. Gonna move over here to the side so we got room to work and still see our reference. So for the body, once again, some basic shapes. So I'm gonna do a smaller oval there and a bigger oval down here. And then we'll kind of start to connect these. This to, it's almost gonna have kind of a lima bean shape here. like that and I think then as this back comes down we'll kind of extend this a little bit for these haunches back here we'll kind of have the haunch come down from the back there like that the belly coming back here and then the other haunch then will be back there I think that looks pretty good all right, now for these tiny little arms here. So let's go ahead and let's again use some basic ovals here to get these arms in there. This one kind of fold over into that hand or that paw. I'll split that up from the, the fur there. And then the other one coming down here in the back. Kind of tucked in behind because of the perspective we've got going on. I'm gonna use the eraser here to clean this up just a little bit so we can see better. I'm holding down the eraser so I can select that same brush that we're using. I'm just gonna pull this back out because it was getting a little muddy there, a little hard to see what was going on. I think that looks good. All right, now for the legs. I think I'm gonna do the tail first though just so we can get that blocked in and we know where the legs are going because we don't want the legs touching the tail or getting too close. So I'm just gonna kind of block in where the tail's gonna go. This is gonna be really rough and sketchy. because I just want the general area. I'm not worried about really what it looks like right now. So we've got that in there now for the legs. And you can see here, the legs are kind of cool because they go back and then forward. So we've got to pull them towards the back of the body first and then forward. Do that on both here and then the angles kind of got to be the same. So you got to make sure that they match up from left to right. Using that eraser to kind of clean up some of that sloppiness. I want those to kind of narrow as they come in towards the foot too. You can just pull the foot in there. Just really simple, not going crazy with details on this either. All right. I think that looks pretty darn good for the sketch. So let me turn off the reference now. And you can see what we're left with for the sketch. I think it works. We've got that, the J shape in there. I think that's readable. So there's our sketch. Now we're just ready to start the inks, which is where we clean everything up. So let's go ahead and work on that next. So to begin with the inks, we're gonna come up here to our layers menu. I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer. And I'm gonna turn down the opacity on my sketch by hitting N to bring up the blend mode. 
bring that down to about 15%. We wanna see it, we just don't want it to be too dark. And you see here, this is also too why I don't really worry about the details and I just go super sketchy because as we drop this down, you can see it almost cleans up the sketch. You can't see all the, the little marks that I've made and all the little really light sketch parts. So it reads a lot better this way and it doesn't make us lose our focus. So now that we've got that done, I'm gonna switch my brush by going up to the brush library. I'm gonna use Smooth Inker. Once again, we're on that layer two and we can kind of get started. I think I'm gonna begin with the eye here. I'm gonna give that a little bit more. This is where I start making kind of design decisions. Make it a little bit more elongated and kind of twist it towards the back there. I'm gonna zoom in here further because I'm gonna do a tapered line here around the eye. If you want to clean up your tapers, you can hold down the air or hold down the eraser, and you can always just erase on the ends. To get a taper like this, basically, I'm lightly pressing, and then I press harder, and then press lighter, and raise up the Apple Pencil towards the end. I'm gonna hold down here to select white in the background. We'll just add in some the highlights here on the eyes. I'm gonna switch back to the black and we can continue to ink around here. Let's go ahead and do this ear next and you'll see once again, twist in the canvas, just like I did before. This is gonna be a little bit heavier of a line because it's an outline. So I'm gonna keep my brush fairly thick for a big swooping line like this too, you'll see. Probably do it a couple times just to get the, the right feel of the stroke using the eraser then to erase my overlaps here. All right, back to my brush. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. We got those in there. Continue this line down towards the chin. See I'm holding down to kind of lock in that line. It gives me a nice solid line. Just continuing these lines around. So I'm gonna do the, the mouth first here. And then that way I can get that lip a lot easier here. If you have an overlap there, you can just erase, or you can also use two different layers, which we'll talk about here in a second too, and I'll show you how that comes in handy. I'm gonna thicken up this part of the line here just because there is gonna be a little bit more line weight there because that is gonna fall underneath the shadow of the mouth there, so that needs to be a little bit thicker towards the front. All right, continuing on here, let's get the nose in there. Drag and drop our color, fill it in. Same thing here, I'm gonna hold down, select white, and get a nice little highlight across the nose here. Hold down to select black and continue our line work here. And with this, I'm pulled in a little bit too far now for this next line, so I'm gonna pull back out. I really just urge you to kind of zoom in and out as much as you can to get a feel for the design. It's great to be zoomed in because you can see exactly how tight your line is, how good the line quality is. But if you're zoomed in too far, you're not gonna be tell, able to tell how that works with the rest of the design. So constantly move in and out with your artwork. Now here's where I talked about making a new layer. So making a new layer by hitting plus. Now we're not on the lines that we were. We're on a totally new layer because this here is a pretty big swooping line. And I wanna make sure that I have the, the right flow to the stroke. And by starting here, I can really make sure that that has the feel and the motion that I want, that it has the right pressure. And you can see now I'm erasing all this and I'm not hitting those lines that I've already done because they are on a separate layer. So really great time saving thing to use there. All right, now I'm gonna keep that line there and go back to my original one because here I can be on this layer, come out here to do this line, and then once again, erase here, and I'm not hitting those lines that I've already done. You can see how nice that is. Now with this, I do want this line to come down a little bit further to meet up here, so I can either redraw that, or if I grab my arrow here, 
Actually, I grab my select tool. I'm sorry. Gonna lasso this, and then grab my arrow, and with warp, I can pull this line down a little bit further to meet where I wanted it there on the backside. So once again, just a little digital cheat that you can do there. Now with those done, I can pinch them together here so they are all back on one layer there. I think I wanna get a little eyebrow in here too. So get that. Actually, I'm gonna make this quite a bit bigger here. Too big. That's always a struggle too, just finding the, the right <laughs> brush size and just kind of play in with it until you get something that you're happy with. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, back to that 7% there. We can continue on to the body now. So I'm gonna do the same thing here because I'm gonna overlap with that head. I'm gonna make a new layer. And I'm gonna to start to pull this line down. Coming in pretty thick since it is an outline here on that side. This side's gonna be thinner because we're on the inside of the body now. It's not an outline. I'm just gonna do a little break there so we can color the paw in a little bit different of a color. It needs to be a little bit further there to the left just because of the perspective we've got going on. And now, go up here in a race and you see I didn't hit those lines that I already did just because they're on a separate layer. Tighten up some of the tapers here. Okay. Moving on down then. I'm going to switch back to that original one because once again, I'm going to overlap here. So we'll start to pull. Actually, I'm going to go this way with it. Do it one more time. And then using the eraser to erase the overlaps. Then you can go back to the arm layer to do this next belly part. Pull this down. And using the erasers, not hitting it because it's on a separate layer. Then just back and forth. So now we're back to the regular first layer so that I can get that one. And I went too far because this is on that layer. <laughs> so as long as I stop before there, I'm good. And there we go. So we've got that. Now I think here on the inside of the body too, we need to break this up and maybe do kind of like a belly color. I'm gonna pinch these together now so they're all on one. So we'll make the belly a different color, but we need a line in there. So we're gonna make a new layer here. And I'm just gonna, with a light press here, just kind of follow this up. I'll start up here. Try that one more time. And this is a little bit difficult because you need to make sure that you're not like hitting any of the lines like this line here. We want to make sure it doesn't come out right there because that looks funky. That's going to make a tangent right there. Uh, same thing here. It needs to kind of come with the curve of this line. So it might take a couple times for you to get it just right. And like here, it's maybe a little bit too close to that. So this is one of those ones that will probably take a couple attempts just to get it in the right position. And then we can erase that. Plus it makes it a little bit more difficult too when you're trying to ink something that you don't have sketched. That does add to the, the struggle there because you're not basing it off, you know, some line work that you've already done. I'm just making sure that these meet up a little bit better there. Okay, yeah, I think that looks good. All right, continuing on then. We can pinch these together now so they're all back on one. And then I'm going to make another new layer for the tail. We're going to do that one next. So with that done, I'm going to start right here. And pull this around. Just like that. Kind of holding down to lock it in. And then for the other side, I'm gonna make another new layer here. That way we can adjust this if we don't like it. And with this, it needs to get thicker at the back end here and thinner towards the front. So that needs to run a little bit closer there towards the front, but not too close. 
I think that's pretty good for the back. So from here then, this is why I put it on a different layer. I'm gonna grab the arrow here and then using the warp tool, I'm just gonna pull that out just ever so slightly from the front and pull it in a little bit there towards the bottom. Now that we've got those done, I can go ahead and pinch these together so they're all in one. We can use the eraser. And I didn't connect those yet because it's really hard to make a round curve there. And I'm not sure, I was thinking that there's maybe not a round curve. So if we go back to reference, yeah, he's kind of got like a tuff there at the end of the tail. So we don't even need to make a round curve for that. We can just kind of pull some tufts of hair. Just like that. Cool. There's the tail. Now on to the legs. This one you can see I kind of pulled this haunch back a little bit. So this leg looks a little bit off now. So I'm gonna play around with the sketch by going to layer one. I'm gonna grab that freehand lasso again. I'm gonna loop that. And then with freeform, I'm gonna move that just a little bit there. We'll do the same thing with this one too. Just move this ever so slightly right there. I think that lines up a little bit better. Okay, with that done now, let's pinch the tail to the body, and then we can make another new layer here for the legs. I'm gonna zoom in again so we can see, and we'll pull the back leg down here. Once again, if you wanna start further up, you can, because we're on a separate layer here. This is where I start to add in little details too, like a little crease there where this leg comes in and goes back in. We'll add a crease there as well. Not sure if I'm crazy on that foot, but we'll go ahead and keep it. And same thing here, pulling this down. back in, whoops, that angled a little bit differently there. And cleaning up any lines I'm not really happy with and then adding in those extra paw or toe lines, whatever you want to call them. All right, and there we go. Last but not least, just gotta get that other arm back in here. Don't wanna forget about that. And we can't see it that well because of the way that I did the inks, they went a little bit over the edge there. So if I grab the arrow here, I can just move everything just a little bit there so I can see it. I'll go back to that legs layer and use that layer to draw here. That arm back there and then that part there for the hand or the paw where it's gonna be a different color. Then zooming back out, you can see what we've got. Let me turn off the sketch pinch these together, and there we go. There is our finished inked version of our Jerboa. So from here, we're ready to start adding the color flats. So let's go ahead and do that next. So to begin the color flats, we're gonna come up here to our layers menu. I'm gonna tap layer two and set this as reference, and then we're gonna go underneath that and make a new layer. This is gonna be the first part of our color flats. Setting this as reference allows us to drag and drop the colors onto layer three. It's gonna use that as a guide for where they go. With that done then, coming up to our color palette, the second color on the top line, we'll use that for the body. I'm gonna hit continue filling up here. This allows me to go in and just tap on all the areas that we want filled in that color. And we don't have to drag and drop every time. Okay, now that we've got that done, let's make another new layer. Switch our color now to Actually, this color here is for the belly. We can add that on that same layer three. So if we switch back to that layer, we can throw that in there. This new layer that we made, layer four, let's use that for the pink, which is gonna be the ears. Continue filling here. We'll do the paws, the legs, and the tail. All right. So now you see we've got two separate color flats layers. Now that we've got that done, we're ready to go in and add the shadows and the highlights. You can see color flats, super easy, super quick. 
So to do the shadows, let's go ahead and go to layer three and make a new layer on top. I'm gonna tap this and set it as clipping mask. So what this does is it allows us to color in on this layer. It only fills in what's colored in on the layer below it that it's clipped to. So if we color out here, it's not gonna show up. Likewise, we've got the pink on a different layer. If we color in here, it's not gonna show up. It's only gonna show up on this area here. So now that we've got that done, let's go up to our color palette. We'll switch over to our shadows color here, which is dark kind of umberish orange color. And with that selected then, we're ready to start. So for here, what we want to do is decide where the light source is coming from. Kind of have that decided just because where I put the highlights here in the eyes, they're towards the left. Same thing with the nose here. The thicker part of that tapered line is over here. So that's where the light source is closer to. So we'll have the light source coming in from this top left, which means the shadows are going to be back on this right side and on the bottom. So I'm gonna zoom in here, and before I start, I'm gonna turn off reference on layer two, so that when we're on this layer five and we get a big area filled in, we can just kind of connect it, and then we can drag and drop our color in there. If we didn't turn off reference, it would fill in everything. So I'm just gonna make sure all these are connected. Get some bigger areas here filled in and connected around the back around the front here so bottom part that'll have a shadow and then the back section here And then we can drag and drop. We'll know if it's connected, if it fills in what we've got there. And it is connected. Otherwise, it would fill in everything. So we know that we connected all of our lines really well. Now I'm going to clean these up a little bit. So I need to zoom in. You'll see this is overlapped here. So I need to erase that side there. Also cleaning up some of these lines. It's really good to get in there tight so you can make sure that you didn't miss any areas and you don't have any gaps peeking through. And now that we've got that done, what we can do is come up here to the layers menu, open up the blend mode by hitting N and then dropping the opacity down. Keep that at about 35, 38, around there. It looks good. And then I'm just going to kind of clean up some more areas like this. I want this to be a little bit higher on top of that lip there. So we'll get that filled in. Also, because the light source is going to be coming this way, like the inside of this ear is going to be having the light hitting it. This side is going to be shadowed. I can't drag and drop, though, because I turned off reference, if you remember. <laughs> so I'm just going to fill that in there, and then we can drag and drop. I don't want the whole thing filled in, so I do want a rim light here. So if we use the, the eraser tool here and just kind of erase on the edge here, I like to not have a complete solid area filled in like that because you can't really tell it's a shadow because the colors you know completely fill in the entire thing so doing that allows that to to read like a shadow get a little bit more there for a shadow i think that's pretty good for the head so now we're moving on to the body then we'll start to pull in shadows around the head pull this around the back section of the arm you'll see it's not hitting the pink because we're on a separate layer we'll get to that pink here in a second okay continuing down just to the parts underneath there Gonna pull in a big circular shadow there. If we go too far out like that, we can just use the eraser. Just connect everything here, and once we have that connected, we can drag and drop. That fills that in. 
And you'll see here, I'm just kind of following these lines. So get a lot of questions, always asking, you know, how do I decide where to put the shadows and, you know, why do I curve this here? And it's really using the work that you've already done in that inking stage. You'll see here, I'm just kind of following the curve the way that comes around. It just all ties into those lines that I've already got there. Same thing here, kind of pulling around the belly and the underside here. A little bit of a shadow there. Maybe down a little bit more right there. Okay, I think that looks good. So that's it for the shadows on that section or that layer. So now we can move on to the pink. So same thing here, going to layer four, new layer on top, tapping that, setting that as clipping mask. And zooming in here so we can see a little bit better. Just gonna pull in a pretty heavy shadow here around the inside of this ear. Once again, you see how I'm following the shape of that curve that I've already got laid in there. Drag and drop the color to fill it in. Then moving down, we can just continue on with the shadows that we already did here. Just continuing those onto the pink color since the pink was on a separate layer and the clipping mask does not affect those when we're on the body layer. Same thing here, pretty big shadow underneath. These and then down the sides. This one I'm probably gonna just hold down the Apple Pencil. You see it makes a line. I don't want that to be too thick because I don't want to take up that whole section of the leg. And just following this curve around. Same thing here, holding down the line. Going on the back right hand side of these lines. Okay. And then for the tail itself, probably go a little bit bigger here with the brush. Pull up the curve here. Just gonna make sure it goes with the same curve that we've got of the tail. All right, I think that looks pretty good. So now, of course, these are really dark, so we need to drop the opacity again. We're going up for the to the layers menu, opening up the Blend mode and dropping the opacity down. Here, I think maybe about 39%. Looks pretty good. All right, so there we go. Now for here, right on the, the ear, these little tufts of hair, I wanna come in here with the eraser on layer five. We'll zoom in so we can see. I'm gonna pull back with the eraser some of those shadows, because once again, it's just too much shadows and you kind of lose sight of the fact that it is a shadow just because there's shadows everywhere. We can do the same thing here along the back side, just kind of a little rim light there around the back to break that up. And you could also do it around the mouth here if you wanted to. Once again, I gotta zoom in really far for this because it's small. But you see how much easier it is to do that once you zoom in. Okay. One last thing, let's see. Actually, I think that's good for shadows, yeah. We're good. So let's go ahead and move on then to highlights. So coming up here to the color palette, we're just gonna select white for the highlights. And then we're gonna go ahead and make new layers for these. Fun little tip here. If you've already got a clipping mask layer made, if you make another new layer, it's gonna make it on top. If you have that one selected, it's a regular layer. If you go underneath that one and tap on your layer that it's clipped to, if you make a new one, it's automatically gonna set it as clipping mask because this one is already clipping mask 
So just a little time saver there. And once again, light source coming in this way, so we'll hit this front section here. And I don't want this to, to hit there where we've got the shadows, so it's gonna take a couple of probably strokes here just to get the right feel. So I want it thicker down here at the bottom, and then it thins out along the top, but at the same time, it keeps that same flow. So I want it to have the same width of space it's taking up as what the line does. See if it comes out too far, it's gonna look wonky because it's thicker in one part and thinner in another part. So I think here's one of those cases that turning the canvas is gonna be kind of the solution there, that your arm's just gonna be more comfortable going a certain way. You can just erase any overlaps. And you see it's not thick. I'm not doing it super thick. I'm doing it fairly thin. I go a little bit heavier with the shadows than I do highlights. Then here too, I can also do a kind of oval highlight I like to do those on the head sometime to give it a little bit more oomph. Then back to the layers menu and dropping the opacity then brings those down. I got that said, it's what, about 36% looks pretty good. All right, then we can kind of continue on here, pulling in some highlights around the top here. And this one doesn't work exactly like I want it to because I want the, the highlight to come here, but of course that's gonna overlap. So this might be where I have to fix stuff. So coming back to layer five then, and using the eraser, I can pull this shadow back out. Because this, what I want it to do, is I don't want them to touch, and I want this, if this highlight would continue around, it would still form that same part of the shadow. So it's like a perfect kind of curve as it comes around. So this one I need to pull back. And you see how that makes that perfect curve, but it's just the two different colors. All right, and I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna throw in one more highlight here on this back ear. So we'll have a little bit there creeping up from the edge. So we'll get that in there. And I think that looks pretty good. All right, so then moving on to the highlights then of the pink. So same thing here, making a new layer automatically becomes the clipping mask layer if we have that selected when we make it. And then just hitting on the edges here. A couple of highlights like that to break it up. And then back up here, end for blend mode, dropping down the opacity. So we get that nice color there. All right, hit the edge of the tail here. A little bit there coming down. And a little bit here on the paws. All right, and there we go. So that's our shadows and our highlights. So from here, this is where I kind of like to finish out the design. I'll go in and add some more details onto that ink layer. So we're gonna select the ink layer and go back to black and select that. We'll go back and we got smooth anchor selected. I'm gonna make the size that 7%, so we'll drop it down. And I just wanna add in some extra details, like I said, just maybe some little like hair here coming off. Secret to this is on some of them, you want them to have like a meeting edge right there with the line. Sometimes you'll want it to come down further into the color so some of it's gonna look like it's coming from behind, some of it's gonna look like it's coming from the front. You can also, if you wanted to do more like crazy ones, you can kinda do a jagged one like that with some tiny lines coming out from the edge. Maybe come in here and give him some kneecaps. I like this kinda 6G thing for kneecaps. Add in some more fur coming around and you can have some coming in from the side there you can have some coming in you know on the body itself it's totally up to you where you want those at just kind of haphazard wherever also need to give them some whiskers too so let's drop the size of this down some more maybe four percent 
and get some whiskers in there. Once again with this, they're not sketched, so making sure that they fall where they need to might be a little bit of a hassle. Then we'll come in and just add some thicker swirls around there so it looks like they're going into that part there. All right, what else can we add? Let's see. Make my brush a little bit bigger again. We'll go in underneath the, the eye here. We add another bag around his eye. Just do some funky swirls there at the end. Drop the size down again here. That might look kind of cool. Maybe some fur coming off there. Some more off there. Just whatever you can do to, to make it your own. Same thing with the, the tail and the legs here. We can add in some, twisting this around. Some like taper lines here. And then coming back and forth. So like you'll start on one side and then go to the other. Just kind of do this technique down there. You can do the same thing on this side and we'll do the same thing on the tail too. Some funky ones like that. Just kind of breaks it up and gives it a little bit more detail. And this, just kind of space them out. Don't make them look too mechanical. Don't want them to be perfectly spaced. So I'll kind of skip some areas like that. Throw some more in. I think that looks pretty good. Just add some more detail into there. Maybe add in some dots here on the inside of the ear just for some more detail and texture. I think that's maybe too much. Maybe just having there at the top might look better. Let me just pull in a few more hair pieces here. You can pull some off of his eyebrow there. It's like he's seen some stuff. All right, last but not least, hopping back into it here, the camera battery died, so I wanna add in just a little bit more to the shadows here, and we're gonna do that with a different brush. So if we come up here to our brush library, I'm gonna use the soft hat shader on this. And then we're gonna go first on the ears in the pink here. So those are on this layer six. We're just gonna go ahead and make a new layer on top of that and set that as clipping mask. I'm gonna zoom in here and I've got this set. Let's see, 8% opacity is about 30. Let's see what this looks like. Color, I wanna switch back to that color we used for the shadows. Actually I need to make this quite a bit bigger. Let's go 20%. There we go. I'm just gonna pull in a little cross hatching here. I'm gonna pull it back away. Let's uh, let's use the soft hat shader for the eraser. I'm gonna pull it back away from the parts that aren't shadowed. So I want just to show up on that inside part. Got that. I'll pull a little bit here on the tail and on the legs, making it just a tad bit smaller. I'm just going really light over top of this, not going very hard at all. Just pulling a little bit there and a little bit here, making it smaller again. Smaller again. That looks good, and we'll do the same thing then to the face. So layer five here, new layer on top of there. Tap that clipping mask. Up the size again here to let's go about 10%. Let's go a little bit lighter in there. I want it to be really subtle. 
Don't want it to be too dark. If you get it too dark, you can either press lighter and try again, or you can always adjust the opacity too on this. Go a little bit bigger here. And then around the bottom here, about 13%. Make it smaller for around the bottom here. All right. And there we go. Last but not least then, need to make a new layer on top of here. Select my black, smooth anchor, zoom in, get this guy signed, and we will be done with today's tutorial so there we go how to draw a cute little jerboa appreciate you guys watching I've got a bunch more left in the series we've got k through z so if you've got an idea for an animal coming up that we haven't covered yet definitely leave a comment below and you might see your idea come to life in one of the new videos like i said i appreciate you guys watching if you do follow along with any of the videos really urge you to post your work online share it so if you're on instagram twitter x just tag me at BJ Dell. Love seeing what you guys come up with. So thanks so much for watching and following along. It's really, really cool. So that's it for me. I can also be found online at BJDell.com. And that's it for today. So until next time, keep creating.